Hey you guys and welcome to another video. So today po is I'm going to discuss with you kung paano nga ba gumawa ng case digest o ano nga ba ang case digest. So if you're interested then please keep on watching. By the way, I'm Jeremiah and I upload law school and law student related vlogs. If you are new to this channel, please don't forget to click subscribe and click the notification bell sa tabi ng subscribe or you can just simply click the click here na circle dyan sa my corner. So let's get to the video. Yes guys and hi nga po and welcome to another video, welcome to another week. So it's been like ilang week na po na hindi ako nakagawa ng video because nga po is na busy ako dahil paparating na po ang finals. And by the time na nakita nyo to, napapanood nyo itong video na to, so most probably tapos na po yung finals namin. So same break na. Today nga po is we'll be discussing kung ano nga ba ang case digest, kung paano gumawa ng case digest at para saan ba yung case digest. So let's start! Now, question po, ano nga ba po ang case digest? Ang case digest po actually is the same as the term na case brief. Some books po, they don't refer to that case digest as case digest. They refer to them as case brief. Even some of my professors, they call it case brief instead of calling it case digest. But they're all the same. Now, case digest po is actually a summary of a case po. Kasi kung hindi nyo po alam, kung hindi nyo pa po na nasubukang magbasa ng isang kaso, usually po ang kaso po is isang mahaba na kaso. May mga nabasa kong kaso before na may 50 pages na kaso. Yung iba umabot ng 60 or 70 or some daw yung umabot ng 100 na pages na case. So, kailangan po natin gawa ng summary yan. So, that summary now is called the case digest. And also, mas madali pong mabasa, maintindihan yung kaso pag may case digest na. Especially po, if you're a student, if you're a law student, then you can relate to this one. Pag cramming times na po, kunwari, may case po na binigay yung professor tapos kailangan nyo pong i the following day o di kaya naman po is kailangan nyo po ng i-exam the following day tapos hindi ka po nakabasa ng kaso so you have to go and read case digest instead kasi mas maikli siya tapos andun na lahat sa case digest yun nga lang po hindi po siya nakaspecify yung explanation po ng case kasi nga po summary na lang po siya also ang case digest is not just for cramming purposes but case digest po is a requirement po sa mga law students na i-submit if I remember it right we were told now that we are required to submit at least 75 case digest sa isang SEM so so, so far po, tapos na kami sa mga case digest. So, nakapagsabit na kami ng at least 70 plus na case digest sa isang subject. Iba pa yung mga case digest from other subjects. So, yun po. Itong mga case digest po, actually, are used din po sa mga books. If you were able to read some of mga law books, like the criminal law book o di kaya sa civil code, may mga in-insert po silang mga kaso dun na ginagawa nilang example ng perfect na application ng law sa isang kaso. So, yun po, kung mabasa nyo po yun, maikli mga kaso lang po yun. And those na mga short cases are called case digest. So, makita doon na, andun na lahat. Na kahit may kli lang yung kaso na nakalagay sa books, is maintindan mo na yung buong kaso. So, yun po ay tinatawag na case digest. These case digests are actually mga short na versions ng mga jurisprudence. Now, talking about jurisprudence, what is a jurisprudence po ba? I think jurisprudence na term is familiar to you because narinig natin to sa sa TV, so di kaya sa mga balita, o di kaya sa, sa president kasi nabimension siya na palagi ng mga jurisprudence. So, ang jurisprudence po are those na decided cases by the Supreme Court. Ibig sabihin po, mga jurisprudence ay mga kaso before na 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 po ng Supreme Court. They may be na close na nakaso, of course, they are decided cases. So, ginagawa po ng Supreme Court as basis for their future decisions. Kasi po, kung hindi nyo po alam, legal system ng Philippines, we are following the principle of stare de Jesus. Ibig sabihin po is adherence to precedence. Ibig sabihin po nito is, yung magiging decision po ng isang court will be adherent, meaning, pinafollow niya yung ma mas nauna. So, ibig sabihin, kung anong naging decision sa nauna na kaso o na decided na kaso is, yun din yung gagayahin niya na decision. But, take note, this is only applicable for those cases na may as much as possible the same na issues. Of course, pag ibang kaso, tas ibang mga issues sa kaso, of course, you cannot use the decision from the previous case. Now, let's proceed to making a case digest. So now, since you know na po kung ano ang case digest, kung para saan ang case digest, then let's talk about kung paano nga ba gumawa ng case digest. Number one po, para ka po makagawa ng isang case digest is, ito po yung pinaka-importante, please take note of this one, you have to read carefully the entire case. Not just reading, but you have to read with comprehension. Remember po, reading with comprehension para ka po makagawa ng isang magandang case digest. Bakit? Diba, sinabi ko po kanina, is, ang case digest po isang summary na isang mahabang kaso. Of course, you cannot summarize a case kung hindi nyo po alam yung case, kung hindi nyo po nabasa yung buong case. So you have to read the entire case po before you can 
make a good case digest. Next, after reading and understanding the entire case, then you have to start identifying the three important parts ng isang case digest. And what are those? The first po is we have the facts. The second is we have the issues. And the third one is we have the ruling of the case. So, Let's start discussing na the first one, which is the facts. Ano nga ba po ang facts? Facts po is ito po yung pinaka-story ng kaso. In other words, ito po yung naging history kung bakit nagkaroon ng kaso or the storyline kung bakit humantong sa kasuhan ang dalawang tao or dalawang parties. So ito po yung naging rason kung bakit nagkaroon ng kaso. For example, in a murder case, kinikwento po dito kung bakit nagkaroon ng murder or mga antecedent na mga, mga pangyayari kung bakit nagkaroon ng isang murder. And this one is specific according to the case, to the full text. This is specific. But if you're going to make a case digest, then you have to summarize the facts as well. For example, nakalagay sa isang full text na, na case is on the 9th of blah 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 at 900 hours or at 9 p.m. A and B were drinking in a in a bar with blah blah blah. Then they were discussing about a lot of things. Tapos when they reached the point that they were arguing about something, then A started stabbing B or something ganun. So in other words po, ito po yung pinaka story ng kaso. Ito po yung facts. Ito po yung facts ng kaso. So, so parang kinikwento niya kung ano ang story behind the case. Now, question. Madali bang makita o makuha ang facts ng case? Ang answer po is yes. Sobrang dali makita ng facts ng isang case because sa full text po ng kaso is nakalagay po doon yung facts or antecedents. Yung mga nangyari. So, all you have to do is you have to read the facts and you have to summarize. For example nga sa ginawa ko kanina, you just have to say na A and B were drinking when eventually after a heated arguments, A started stabbing B, which eventually caused the death of B. So that's the fact already. So you don't need to specify everything talaga, like anong oras niya pinatay, or saan niya pinatay. So kasi this one is a, is a case they just already, so summary na lang po siya. So yun po. The next part po is the issues. Ano nga ba po ang issues? Yung issues po is ito po yung pinagtatalunan sa isang kaso na pilit hinahanapan ng sagot na nagpetition or di kaya ng side ng victim or di kaya ng side ng suspect. So ito po yung uh, hinahanapan nilang ng sagot. So ito po yung pinaka-issue sa kaso. Tapos, of course, since may naghahanap ng sagot, so yung Supreme Court o di kaya yung judge, yung issue po is ito po yung pilit niyang sasagutin o bibigyan ng decision. Of course, in accordance with our laws sa Philippines. For example, balik tayo sa ginawa kong example kanina doon sa, sa stabbing ni A kay B. So, let's just say, ang issue is, uh, sino ba talagang may kasalanan sa nangyari? Pwede naman kasi na sabihin na si B, na si B is pre-revoke niya si A para i-stab siya eventually ni A. Parang ganun. So, yung mga example ng issue. Or for example, ano ba usually ang issue sa kapitbahay natin? For example, yung kapitbahay niyo po is umalis ng bansa. Tapos pagbalik niya is may bit-bit na po siya na, na bata. So, anong issue po dun? So, yung magiging issue dun is, kaninong anak yung bata? Anak ba ng kapitbahay? bahay mo yung bata o nabuntis ba siya. So usually those are the issues na kailangan na kailangan mo sagutin sa example na yun. Sa kaso po na kailangan nyo pong gawa ng key stages is usually parang ganun po yung magiging issue. Now, question. Nasa full text ba yung issues na kalagay? Of course, nasa full text po ng case yung issues po. Dinidiscuss po yan sa full text ng case. Next question po is ilan po ba usually ang issue sa isang kaso? Then the answer for that is depende. May mga kaso na isang issue lang po ang dinidiscuss nila sa kaso. Isang issue lang po ang pinipetisyon ng isang side sa isang kaso. Tapos may mga kaso din po na napakarami ng issues. But you just have to choose which one to use for your case digest. Ganito kasi yan. Sa law school po kasi, di ba marami tayong subjects. We have civil law, we have criminal law, we have statutory construction. So, usually, sa kaso, may mga issues po na they will fall under criminal law, they will fall under statutory construction, or they will fall under constitutional law. So, ang gagawin nyo po is, you just have to pick kung anong issue ang, ang applicable po sa subject nyo po. For example, if you are asked to submit a case digest under criminal law, then you just have to choose those issues na pwedeng ma-under sa criminal law. For example, yung mga issues po kung sino nga pang pumatay or di kaya kung issues about about sa sentence or the penalty imposed. So yun po mga issues na yun, e, e, pwede nyo pong ilagay siya under sa criminal law. Tama ba na may treachery sa krimen na yun? Tapos tama ba yung pinataw na penalty against the accused? Tapos may dinagdag pa na kailang bayaran na damages? 
guys. Parang ganun. Tapos, may mga questions din na tama ba yung pag-interpret ng law against those crime na yun? So, there are a lot of issues po sa isang, for example, sa isang kaso. But since you are required to submit a digest for criminal case, then you just have to focus on those issues na related sa criminal case. Ano dun? Kung tama ba yung penalty? So, pag ganun po, you don't need to write those issues about sa liabilities or sa damages. Because when we talk about damages and liabilities, pwede na siyang ma-fold dun sa civil liabilities. So, hindi na siya dun sa criminal law. Okay? O, di naman kaya dun sa issue, sa last issue na nabanggit ko about dun sa pag-interpret ng law. So, yun naman po ng interpretation sa law na issue, hindi naman siya magpa-fall under criminal law. Magpa-fall naman siya sa statutory construction. Parang ganun, guys. So, maraming issues but you just have to choose kung aling issue ang pwede nyo pong kunin for your subject. Don't worry po, your professors are very good in giving you cases. They will give you cases that are related to your current na topic. For example, yung last topic namin sa criminal law is about sa mga penalties, period ng penalty. Like for example, yung reclusion perpetua, yung mga ganon, yung mga temporal, correctional, parang ganon. So, our professor gave us cases na may mga issues tungkol dun sa topic namin. So, it's easier for us to identify kung anong issues na pwede natin ilagay sa case stages natin because it should be in line with our topic sa subject. Don't worry, at first, medyo mahirap po talagang mag-identify ng issue sa kaso. But eventually, pag palagi ka na pong nagbabasa ng isang case, then you will know which issue to write and which not to write. So, parang ganun. Now, question, how to identify issues? So, guys, madali lang pong mag-identify ng issue. Especially if ang issues are nakalagay. For example, nakalagay sa case na the petitioner raised the following issues. So, yun na yung issues. So, nakalagay na sa case. But there are some issues na po na implied lang siya nilagay. So, paano nga ba i-identify yung mga implied na issues? So, ginagawa ko po is ganito. Binabasa ko talaga yung ruling. Kung ano po yung palaging dinidiscuss sa ruling, then most assuredly, yun po yung issue na pilit po dinidiscuss ng Supreme Court. For example, there was one time na yung issue is about citizenship. So, hindi naman nakalagay sa kaso na there was a question about the citizenship of the candidate. Parang ganun. Pero, according sa ruling po ng Supreme Court, eh, dinidiscuss nila doon kung ano bang qualifications ng maging citizen ng country or dual citizenship about ng ganun. So, naisip ko na, ah, okay, this is talking about citizenship. So, the issue na is whether or not the respondent is a citizen of the country. Parang ganun. So, in other words, guys, kung ano po yung palaging dinidiscuss sa kaso, then yun po yung issue ng case. And yes, since I mentioned about whether or not or parang ganun, the question po is how to state the issue. So, guys, there are two modes po in expressing the issue. So, the first one is using the one or whether or not. So, you say whether or not the Supreme Court erred in neglecting the evidence. Parang ganun. So, you will use whether or not or mas kilala siya sa tawag na one, whether or not. The second po is uh, stating the issue in a question na form. For example, did the Supreme Court fail to consider the evidence? So, ganun guys. So, you may use whether or not pwede kaya in question form. Again ha, let's have another comparison. So, first is whether or not the Supreme Court failed in recognizing the evidence. Or in question form is did the Supreme Court fail to consider the evidence. Parang ganun. So, you may use either whether or not or in question form. Now guys, yung last part po ng case stages is now the ruling or ano bang naging decision ng Supreme Court. So, it's called the ruling na part or they call it held. So, dito po is dinidiscuss po dito kung ano nga bang decision ng court eh. Whether dinismiss niya yung petition or dinismiss niya yung kaso or binigyan niya ng grant yung petition or whatever. So, this one is the decision na part. To be honest guys, this part is very easy because ito na part is nasa may latter na part ng isang full text na case. So, madali lang siya identify some full cases also ang nakalagay na court's ruling. So, alam nyo na na doon na part na yun is the ruling. You just have to summarize that one para ilagay nyo po sa case stages. Okay? So, ito po na part again is dinidiscuss dito kung ano nga bang naging decision. And please take note, you also have to indicate kung ano po ang naging rason or naging basihan ng korte sa naging decision niya sa case. So, if naglagay po doon sa full text ng, ng provision sa Philippine laws, then you also have to cite as much as possible that provision sa inyong case stages. So, you will say, according to article blah 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 of the constitution, blah 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 so ilagay nyo din po yan sa inyong case stages okay? So that is ruling So guys, those are the three parts po the three main parts of a case stages so I hope na nakuha nyo yung important parts ng case stages
Now guys, let me answer to you some common questions related po sa case stages. Okay? First question, may perfect ba na case stages? I would say, wala pong perfect na case stages. Yung mga case stages po ay nagpo-focus pa iba't ibang mga issues. So, that issue could not be applicable to your subject or to your topic ngayon sa inyong subject. So, I would say na hindi siya, hindi siya magandang digest for that. But, it could be na mas applicable siya to other subjects. So, parang ganun. Next question, can we rely on case digest on the internet? Depende. Okay? Kailangan nyo pa rin gawin is basahin yung digest na yun if yung digest na yun is applicable nga sa inyong subject. Sa sinabi ko nga po kanina, marami pong types ng digest o marami pong ginawa ng mga digest for that specific na case. Pero po, is iba-iba po yung kinuha nila na issues from the case. So, kailangan nyo pong basahin muna yung digest na yun if yung issues ba na diniscuss niya sa, sa digest na yun is related and applicable to your subject. Inamin ko po na ako din po is sometimes nagre-rely sa mga case digest. Especially po pag cramming time na talaga po. So pag emergency na, tapos wala akong alam sa case, so what I do is I search on the internet, tapos nagbabasa na ako ng case stages. So kahit na po iba yung issues na binigay nila, at least alam ko po yung naging flow ng kaso. So again, you may read and you may consider case stages sa internet if emergency na po. If talagang cramming na po kayo. Okay? Now, speaking of full text, saan po makuha ng full text case? Guys, marami pong pwedeng pagkuna ng full text case. So we have the scrap. Sa mga libraries po natin sa law schools, may mga scrap po tayo dyan. So, yung mga books na makakapal na nakalinya ng mar maraming mga volumes. So, those are mga scrap po. So, pwede po kayong maghanap ng mga cases doon. You just have to refer to scrap number. Yan po ay bibigay ng professor nyo. Or, for easier na access, marami po tayong pwede mapagkunan sa internet. Number one po dyan is law field. Sa klase po namin is, we usually get our full text cases from lawfield.net. I'm gonna put the link below. We have also Chan Robles. Tapos, may marami pa po ng mga sites. I'm going to put the sites po sa my description box. May mga sites din po na hindi nyo po sila pwede ma-access agad because yung iba is may bayad. Okay? So, I recommend Lawfield and Chan Robles. Okay? So now, guys, here are my tips for you if you're going to make a case digest. Number one nga po is, you have to read carefully the case and read it with comprehension. Yun talaga, guys. Para maintindihan nyo po yung buong kaso. Tapos, makagawa din po kayo ng magandang case digest. Next, kung magdadigest po kayo, sa so ginagawa ko po is, nagdadigest ako using my laptop or computer. Para po, kasi po, mas madali po magdigest using your computer. Kasi, may mga points, pag binasa nyo po yung full text, may mga points niya parang, uy, ito importante. So, pwede nyo pong lagyan ng highlight yun while reading the rest of the case. Tapos, may mga parts naman na pwede nyo nang tanggalin, so pwede nyo nang i-delete agad while reading the case. So, para sa akin, mas maganda po na mag-case digest kayo using your computer. May mga klase po kasi ako na sinasabi nila is, while reading the case, sinusulat nila agad sa notebook yung digest o di kaya sa papel. Parang hindi applicable sa yun na sistema na yun. So, ginagawa ko nga po is, I digest with my laptop. Next po is, para po mas madali po yung pag-digest nyo, this is a tip na narealize ko po while making my digest. You have to get away with those parts sa full full text na nagbibigay ng reference to other cases, previous cases or other jurisprudence. For example, ang mga keywords po doon is in accordance to people versus blah blah blah. Pag may ganun po, ibig sabihin is yun po is example ng decision from other case. You don't need that one sa yung case stages, so you just have to drop them out. Pag naglalaptop kayo, so madali lang po yung tanggalin. Also, you may get away with those parts na provisions na diniscuss o na mention sa case. Yung mga provisions po na parang pinaulit-ulit na lang. So you have to, just have to drop them out. Tapos, para po, hindi na masyado mahaba yung, yung digest nyo. Usually, yung case digest is one page lang yan sa isang bond paper. Hindi talaga siya mahaba, guys. Yung ruling is nasa two or three paragraphs lang. Yung issue, of course, one or two issues. Pwede na. Tsaka yung facts is usually nasa one tsaka two paragraphs lang also. Next, this one is, I learned this one from my friend who is now a lawyer. According to her, kasi there was one time, I asked her to how to make ba a digest. Tapos sabi niya, sige, ikwento mo sa akin yung ano bang nabasa mo sa, sa case, sa full text. Tapos, tapos ikwento mo sa akin. Tapos kung anong kwento mo sa akin, yun lang din yung isulat mo. So yun guys, in other words, in making a case stages, it's just sharing what you read, what you learned from the full text, tapos writing it in a shorter way. Parang ganun guys. So para ka lang po nagsishare ng chismis o kaya ng kwento sa iyong kaibigan. So ganun lang po ang paggawa ng case stages. 
So yun lang guys, and I hope that you were able to get something today. I was able to help you in making a case digest kasi nga po, importante po ang case digest for us na mga law students. So again, if you have other questions related to, the, to our topic today or to anything about me or about sa law school or about pagiging law student, then please write that one below. Pag may suggestions po kayo for my future na mga videos or topics, then please also write that one below. Guys, I, I just want to let you know that I'm reading all your comments. Though there are times na hindi di ako nakapag-reply kasi po medyo may ginagawa ako or something. But guys, thank you for your comments po. I really appreciate everything. And yes, I am encouraging everyone also to please follow me on my social media accounts. Nakalink po sila sa baba sa my description box and also dito din po sa may baba. Nakalink sila lahat. So my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook. So guys, I hope you follow me also in my other uh, social media platforms. Again, if you are new to this channel, then please don't forget to click subscribe and click the notification bell sa tabi na subscribe. And guys, please also leave this one a thumbs up if you like this one and if, if you find this one informative. You can also share this one mga law school na classmates. Okay? So yun lang guys. Thank you and I will see you in my next video.